Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind-the-scenes science, collections, and research at Chicago's Field Museum. This is some information about the equipment that we use when we collect fossils. So normally when you find a fossil, part of it's exposed on the ground, which lets you see that there's actually a fossil there and maybe identify it. But typically, most of the fossil, at least part of it, is still partially buried. In order to collect that fossil, we need to do some digging around it. And we use a variety of tools in that stage, including things like a little paintbrush here for brushing bits of um, dirt and dust and things off of the specimen, basically like fine detail work. Depending on the nature of the sediment that the fossil is in, sometimes we need to use things like awls or chisels to help break up the rock around the fossil. And using something like a chisel, you have to be careful not to damage the fossil, but if it's very hard rock, sometimes that's necessary. You can often use a rock hammer, so use this for hitting the uh, chisels. You can also do some digging around the fossil with the back end of the rock hammer. And sometimes even something like a pocket knife um, is useful, where you can do very fine detail work for digging around the fossil with the blade of your pocket knife. But once we have the fossil exposed, the next step is to stabilize it to help um, strengthen the fossil, make sure it can survive this trip back to the museum in one piece or as few pieces as possible. And typically what we do at that stage is to coat the specimen with a very thin glue. And what that glue consists of is small plastic beads like this that get dissolved in acetone. And so that gives us a very nice thin glue that penetrates the fossil well, but also dries very quickly. And um, it's also something that's reversible, so if the preparators back at the museum need to do additional work, they can remove the glue relatively easily. After the glue has dried, sometimes we'll need to make a plaster jacket around the specimen. So if it's a fairly large specimen that we want to take out in essentially one piece, the plaster jacket will help support the specimen and protect it from bumps and bruises on its way back to the museum. We'll usually start by putting a layer of damp tissue paper or toilet paper over the specimen to form a, ba a barrier between it and the plaster so the plaster doesn't stick to the specimen. And then we use plaster bandages like this. So basically the same kind of bandages a doctor would use to make a cast for a broken arm or leg. Um, we wet these and then we can um, essentially shape them around the specimen to form a nice protective shell around it let those dry, and then we have a plaster jacket that we can use. Finally, once our specimen is stabilized and or jacketed, um, typically we'll put it in a collecting bag. Um, so here's an example of that. It has a nice tag on it where we can record locality information and details about the specimen. If it's a big specimen, it can go in a big bag, but um, a lot of times we collect smaller things that require very small or smaller collecting bags. We have a range of sizes of those. One of the most important pieces of data that we collect or pieces of information that we collect for each of the fossils that we find is its geographic location. So essentially the latitude and longitude of the point on the earth where that fossil came from. That lets us look at um, patterns in biogeography, so essentially the distribution of animals, as well as tells us something about their geological occurrence and any patterns of distribution that we might be interested in in the field. Our main tool for recording that information is a GPS unit. So we use um, satellites that are in orbit around the Earth to locate our position very precisely. And um, much like the GPS in your car, it gives you a very precise um, piece of information about your point on the Earth's surface. We also use topographic maps, such as this one, to um, record our GPS data. Um, so topographic maps, all the contour lines that you can see on there, correspond to higher and lower areas. And this can tell us if we're finding fossils in um, the size of cliffs or um, in valleys and what the distribution of things looks like there. So this map, when we're done, will have a bunch of information written on it about where we find fossils. And also, we always take um, field notebooks along to record information on where we find fossils. So we found such and such fossil at this locality in these kinds of rocks and um, record other contextual information um, that we can use once we get back to the lab and are studying the fossils. We can say which parts go together, um, where were they collected, when were they collected, and um, use that information to sort of draw broader inferences. In addition to the various tools that we use for actually collecting fossils and the things that we use for recording information about the fossils that we find, we also have some more standard equipment that we need just as we're hiking around in the field, prospecting and finding fossils. Probably the most obvious thing for that is a good pair of hiking boots. 
Um, you can also need a backpack such as this one for carrying around your water supplies, fossils that you find, collecting equipment, lunch, all those things. Um, sunscreen is always a good idea. It's very sunny here in Africa. Um, we also carry walkie-talkies around so we can keep in contact with each other if we get split up. Um, usually have some batteries in there for the GPS or the walkie-talkies, your water bottle. And one thing that's a little more esoteric is um, all the water that we drink um, is basically water from the local areas, either get out of the wells or streams or something. Um, and we have water filtration pumps that we use to filter out any bacteria or other nasties to make the water safe to drink. This is a little personal size water pump that I have um, for that purpose, but we also have a big one that we'll probably see in some upcoming videos um, that we use for purifying larger amounts of water. So the water we use for cooking, and most of the water we use for drinking. This is mostly like a personal backup 